I'm gonna teach you how to integration test inside of Spring Boot. I'm gonna keep this nice and quick and cram in as much information I think that you need to know. So let's get right into it. So here we have the test pyramid and we can see integration tests sit slap bang in the middle above unit tests and under UI tests. Bear in mind, there's a whole bunch of tests not even pictured on this pyramid. But the general model is that the higher the pyramid you go, the slower tests are to run and the more expensive they are. So integration tests run slower and they're more expensive to write than unit tests. And the reason for that is because unit tests test units. So anything they collaborate with will be mocked out. They'll be faked. However, in the case of integration tests, the different components actually do communicate. So your code is generally doing more and you're generally testing more. So the quickest way to understand this is to see it working. So I'm going to start the application and we'll hit the REST API in Postman. Now this REST API only has a single endpoint and it's using a HTTP get verb and it is forward slash books. And the idea is it's going to list all of the books that we have in the database. Now we have Flyway set up to populate an in-memory H2 database with 100 books and 100 authors. So if we hit this endpoint here, Shadow in the Attic, Pill on the Horizon, so on and so forth. That is our endpoint. Let's get to testing it. So inside of our service layer, we have a single service, which is our book service with a single method, which is list books. We can see here, we pass in a pageable and we get a page of books. Now, if we take a look at the implementation for it, it's a really simple implementation. So we've got our book repository auto wired in here via the constructor. This list books method, the only thing that we're doing inside of this method is simply calling the book repository dot find all. Spring Data JPA already does so much for us, but we can still test this really well with an integration test. So there's a few things to point out about this integration test. The first thing is the name, right? So we've got here book service impl, which is the thing that we're testing. And then we have it ending in IT or integration test. So we're using this with the fail safe Maven plugin, which is used to separate unit test runs from integration test runs. You can see that in the POM file right here. So we can see here the fail safe plugin and it's got the goal of integration tests and verify. So that allows us to separate the unit test runs from the integration test runs and it picks up the IT name format. But other than that, we can see that book service impl IT tests book service impl. Now, some other things on the go here is this Spring Boot test annotation. So when we use at Spring Boot test, we're basically going to start up a test version of our application. So it's going to have a Spring context and we're going to be able to do things like auto wire in beans or hit REST APIs, all that good stuff. We're essentially having a running application, albeit a test version. So the next thing I should point out is the extend with annotation. So we're using JUnit 5. And this extends with is a way of extending JUnit 5, the thing that runs tests, to have some additional functionality. In this case, hooking into Spring Framework. We can see here, if we look at the implementation, that because we are starting up a test application, we're able to auto wire in actual implementations. So we can see here, we've got under test being auto wired in via the constructor into a private instance variable that we can then test in our classes. This is what makes integration tests different from unit tests. In a unit test, we would have to create the book service impl, passing in mocks of any collaborators such as repositories. But because it's an integration test, we're able to use actual repositories and actually interact with the database. So we have populated our database with 100 books. We can actually test that in our test. So if we look here, our test implementation is really, really basic. We're simply calling list books, passing in a page request from page zero of size 100 to basically give me 100 books. And we're asserting that the content has the size 100. We're not doing anything extra special here, but this allows us to say, do we have 100 items in our database? So let's run this test from the command line, which we can do by using Maven. And then we're going to type verify. That took just under 11 seconds. For unit tests, that would run in maybe under a second. But because it had to set up a whole spring application with a database and auto wiring and all that good stuff, it takes a little bit longer to run. For one test, it's usually fine. But if you're having hundreds of these things, the time can really add up which is one of the downsides of integration tests. So here we are in the presentation layer, a single class called book controller. We have the rest controller annotation because hey, we're dealing with a rest API here. And we can see it has a single collaborator, a single dependency, which is the book service, which is auto wired in via the constructor and stored in a private instance variable. Here is our single endpoint, a git mapping. So using the HTTP verb get and for the path forward slash books. And the only thing that this implementation is doing is calling the book service dot list books passing in the pageable. So what would a test look like for this? 
Let's create a class and I'll show you. So here we are at the Boot Controller IT. We can take a look here. We've got the at Spring Boot Test annotation on the top. We know about that. It starts up a test version of our Spring application for us. We have at extend with Spring extension. So that's going to hook into the JUnit 5 runner and extend it to work with Spring Framework. But we do have something different here. We have at auto configure mock MVC. So mock MVC is an amazing utility for testing REST APIs built with Spring Framework. So by doing at auto configure mock MVC, Spring's going to create that for us and place it into our app context so we can then auto wire it and use it in our test class. So we can see here we have a private instance variable for mock MVC. And if we scroll down here, we have a constructor, which is just auto wiring that in and assigning it to the mock MVC. So we have mock MVC available, but we don't have our class under test. Why is that? Well, because mock MVC allows us to hit the REST API so we can test our presentation layer by actually using it as a REST API in our tests. So if we go down here, we have two tests. The first test is just going to do a plain HTTP get call to forward slash books. So let me talk you through this mock MVC usage here. So we can see here it's using this nice fluid pattern. So we're able to build up our request. So mock MVC, we're performing using a git URL on forward slash books. So we're doing a git call to forward slash books, which we know from our controller is our only endpoint. And this one will just print out our response. We can see that when we run it. Now we're expecting that the status is going to be OK. So it is OK. It's going to assert that it's HTTP status 200. On the next line here, we're using JSON path. So because our response body has JSON in it, we're able to use this JSON path expression to check on things. Now we're using Spring Data JPA pagination. So we happen to know that it has a total elements attribute in its response body. So we're going to take that and assert that there is 100 elements, which we know to be the 100 book elements that we've populated the database with. The second test is going to be a little different. So we are still doing a git call and we are still doing it to forward slash books. We're passing in that query parameter size equals two. So we're only going to get two books back rather than the default, which I believe is something like 20 books. Now we're going to check that by going into the content and we're going to use matches has size two to say there should only be two things in this content. Remembering that content is a JSON array containing books. So if there's only two things in there. It means that only two books have been returned. And we can build this out to have as many tests as we like. But I think this demonstrates just some nice usages of mock MVC, which again is different from how we would test our service layer. So let's run this now. All right, so that's done and they've all passed. It was a great success. But we can see here that the total time running was just over 14 seconds. So we've moved up from 11 seconds to 14 seconds just by adding a couple of tests for our presentation layer. So like I say, we are testing the actual REST API using actual REST API calls, which is amazing. But of course, it does take that extra bit of time to run and such is the upsides and the downsides of integration tests. So this has been a very basic example, but I'm going to commit this code and push it on up to GitHub so you can download it and take a look at it and run it locally if you wish. And there we go. A very basic and quick example of how to use integration tests inside of a Spring Boot application. Now, if you're still a bit new to Spring Boot and you're trying to understand it still, be sure to check out this tutorial here, which is the Spring Boot Crash Course, which takes you from a complete beginner to knowing and feeling comfortable with Spring Boot. I'll see you over there.